is Sakani Robinson and I am a sociology doctoral student at UC Santa Barbara in California. I work for American Ballet Theater Summer Intensive. I am a research intern for a nonprofit organization called Brown Girls Do Ballet and I am a recipient of the Barbara Brown Scholarship for the North American Society for the Sociology of Sport. I'm going to discuss a sport that is not often discussed or even oftentimes debated whether it fits into the category of sport, and that's ballet. Ballet falls between this line of performing arts and sports, and depending on who you talk with, they may or may not acknowledge ballet as an actual sport. However, following Henning Eichberg's sport trialectic, though these trialectics are not mutually exclusive, as of today, ballet would fall primarily under the, the description of bodily experience which would be defined as a movement that is tied to community, identity, social solidarity, and the pleasure of movement, all in which dance, particularly ballet, does embody. While discussing ballet, it's important to acknowledge the intersectionality within ballet and how it affects the experiences of dancers of different racial identities, class backgrounds, and genders. Ballet has, has historically been known as a predominantly white elite activity since it was first created in Italy during the late 14th, early 15th centuries. During this time, ballet was strictly for the royal courts and from the beginning, black dancers were excluded from ballet. It wasn't until the 1950s we started seeing black people enter ballet, particularly in the United States. However, they were heavily discriminated and marginalized against. They were asked to perform with makeup lighter than their skin in order to be perceived as more ambiguous. They have been excluded symbolically because of the lack of diversity when it comes to tights, leotards, and point shoes. In fact, it wasn't until about 2017 where they started one particularly particular ballet company started making point shoes that complemented a variety of skin complexions and moved away from just the ballet pink. And they have also still been marginalized by roles they are given that reiterate stereotypes or as Patricia Hill Collins discussed, controlling images. Controlling images would be defined as images of a subordinate, subordinate group developed by a dominant group that work to justify oppression. The portrayal of black women as stereotypical mammies, matriarchs, welfare recipients, Jezebels, or as we call them today, video vixens, are central features of the political economy of dominance and fostering black women's oppression. Due to these controlling images, black women are not seen fit for ballet. It was said that black women cannot be elegant and pure, which creates a barrier for black women trying to enter the ballet professionally. And while it's already about 1% of aspiring dancers become professional ballet dancers, which is similar to any other sport across the board, within that 1%, only 5% are black women and that is of today and that is the highest number that it's ever been. And within that, we then we then see what roles they're placed in. And these roles that they are they are placed in reiterates these controlling images and stigmas. For black women in ballet, they are faced with a double oppression, which is being black and being woman. Racially, black people have historically been treated unjust and are constantly discriminated against. And historically, women have not been treated equal to men simply because of their gender. And so black women are discriminate, discriminated against for their race and marginalized for their gender, hence the double oppression. This double oppression makes black women least likely to be hired as professional ballet dancers and also acknowledges how important intersectionality is when discussing topics such as sports and work. Through a critical race lens, we are able to see how Black dancers are excluded symbolically and overtly in ballet, as well as create dialogue within the intersectionality of race, gender, and sport. And so I just wanted to leave that there so that way we're engaging in this conversation of race, gender, and sport that sometimes gets overlooked or not always gets the acknowledgement that it deserves. And so with that being said, I wanna say thank you for your time.